Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli and I'm here with Paul Fricci. We're at Midwest Krav Maga and I'm back here again. I've been here several times now and yes, we're back this weekend. Me and Aaron Gennetti, we're here doing a knife control concept seminar. Not what I'm talking about in the video today, but I, we do appreciate Paul for having us in. And it's always a great time up here. So anyway, I'm gonna get straight to it. Um, we're gonna talk about Darce Choke stuff because I've had so many people asking me about more Darce Choke details. And there's a lot of videos out there, but I wanna give a, a guide that really kind of isolates some of what I consider the most important um, principles, concepts, and technical descriptions of the Darce Choke. There's some things that whenever you first learn the darts choke that, that are difficult sometimes and uh, it can all change depending on the size of the person, the length of your arms, the size of uh, the interactions and everything else and where it starts from and where it ends up. So to break down what a darts choke is to begin with, it's a head and arm choke and if we're going from like side control, so if, if Paul is here and he's kind of turned up on his side toward me, this is one of the most common places that it happens from. Oftentimes whenever he's established the underhook, which is good for him from bottom side because he can build up and start an uphill escape on me. So um, uh, me combating this here, the way that I'm gonna counter this and typically is I'm gonna throw this overhook on his underhook, right? So I'm kind of whizzering against him. Now, I'm not just hugging his arm here like this necessarily, but I'm instead bracing my form against him so that it slows his ascent and that uphill escape. So um, as that happens here, I wanna get this arm woven through under his arm and then all the way out by his neck. And if you notice, as I go to do that, I'm gonna wind up a little shallow. So one of the first uh, details that people encounter that gives them a hard time is how do I get my arm in to the length, to the depth that I need to get it? And this is one of the best details in my opinion of how to do that. I'm gonna take my, my ear and my neck and I'm gonna roll it down toward Paul's fro floating ribs down here. So what that looks like is where I'm on my chest right now, I'm gonna grab the crown of his head, tuck his chin down, and I'm gonna shoot here, my arm nice and deep inside. So now this, this is a good length here because now as I drive down, I'm gonna keep contact here on the back of his head and I'm gonna drive my forearm down toward the floor and I'm gonna ratchet by rotating my arm inward until I get my karate chop hand here into the bend of my elbow. This hand comes back up, I drive my hips in and I squeeze and it's a very tight choke. So I'm trying to walk through that a little quickly so he stays awake, right? So <laughs> as we go in, pulling the head down, driving the arm in, I'm gonna still be shallow, but I'm gonna roll my neck down so it gives me the length that I need. What's the part, what are the pieces of this that really make this an effective choke? Like any triangle, arm triangle or leg triangle, there's three elements to it. Two pieces are mine, one piece is his. So on mine here, one is gonna be my arm, typically my forearm here against one side of his neck. The back of my tricep is against the back of his neck. So that's two pieces mine. The third piece is his shoulder being driven by my chest, but his shoulder driving in on the other side. And that's gonna constrict the blood flow. That's what actually makes the choke really, really effective. So uh, once more from this kind of position, if he goes here, the way I'm gonna kill his underhook or combat his underhook, I'm gonna throw this overhook on top of it like a wizard. I'm gonna get up on my toes, tuck his chin in, shoot my arm nice and deep, and ratchet all the way down to the floor here. Now, I can finish perpendicular driving my hips in. If I feel like that's not quite getting the job done, I can drop to my hip and chase his legs this way here, and then that's gonna tighten it even further. So there's pros and cons to each. I typically like to try to finish perpendicular on my toes, um, facing downward toward him if I can. If I'm not quite getting the job done, I'll drop to that hip, start chasing his legs around. It tightens the choke even further, but I do give up the possibility that he might come on top and start to fight out of the choke that way. Now, that's kind of a basic application. Where does it happen from if he's not giving me the underhook from side control and trying to uphill escape? Um, a common place that I can set it up uh, a little bit more is from turtle position. If Paul's just sitting here turtled up on me like this, then a common way for me to set up the, the prospect of it is I can enter in by the armpit, come out by the neck. And this is another question I get a lot of the time, the difference between an anaconda choke and the difference between that and a darce choke. Uh, anaconda choke starts by the neck, exits by the armpit. So it's gonna look more this way. It's gonna also have a roll to it. Whereas the Dars is just the opposite. It starts by the armpit, comes out by the neck. So when we're here, I shoot from the armpit out by the neck this way. From this position, I can either shoot directly in, boom, here this way, and drop to my hip, but I do have to make sure that I'm not falling too much underneath him like this where he can posture out of it, right? So I don't want that. I need to get here this way, and then that's a nice tight connection. Um, what I typically prefer to do myself, I wanna get him back on his side or on his back like I could finish from the side control version that I showed initially. So the way that I'll accomplish that is getting here and either gable grip or S grip, 
I'm gonna bring this arm in, and then I'm gonna press down on his head, raise up by his armpit, boom, and then suplex him over like that. Once that happens here, now I'm back in position where I can shoot my arm in nice and deep, come out from behind, and I'm back in that original position where we were from side control to begin with. That's a, a pretty cool variation as if I look to hit it from uh, butterfly guard. So if I'm here butterfly guard and Paul's sitting here, um, this is typically referred to as the Mars choke. Not Mars from Marcelo Garcia, which a lot of people think that that's where this gets its name, but it's actually Mars from uh, Mark Lehman, I believe. So um, what that's gonna look like is I'm gonna do an arm drag. And when I go to arm drag, <clears throat> typically I'm gonna get an outside grip over here on the wrist. I wanna drag here. So I get this bend of his elbow, pull and drag his arm across. I feel that space behind his shoulder with my shoulder and I come up and I get this connection to the back of his neck. Now grabbing the back of his neck, just like a, if we were doing Muay Thai and I was grabbing the back of his neck, he can posture easier. So I'm gonna look for the crown of his head. So I'm gonna go here, double grip. So now I've locked his head and his arm in position like this. So once I have this here, now I'm gonna slide up until I get my tricep to the back of his head. Once I get my tricep there, I'm gonna push down. And now I've got the connection that I need to hit that, that Mars choke or that modified Dars choke here like this. Now to further advance my position because the position is gonna really finalize the choke, I'm gonna take my inside hook on my left side and I wanna drive that foot across. So you see that once I have this connection established and I drive this foot across, I'm bringing this foot out and I'm gonna pedal myself away, extend my bottom leg, and then that's gonna drive him over to his side here. And then I can finish the darts from upside here like this. And again, then we have to deal with kind of uh, his countermeasures and how to shut down some of his countermeasures. And so what are some of the common countermeasures that we're gonna look at from him? If he's on his side like we started with, and I'm shooting in, but, um, and I've gotten this, this underhook established, and I've killed his underhook, right? Then as he's moving his head away, that's something else he might try to do. If I can't get his head down, I'm never gonna get deep enough to hit that choke on that side. So a couple different ways that I typically like to address this is one, if I can't get his head ducked down and I can't get my arm deep enough, I'll go through here and I'll get this S grip back here. So my finger's sticking out, I'm gonna go palm down, S grip inside here like this. So even if uh, Paul arches his head all the way back, all he's doing is lifting his chin and giving me access underneath his jawline for me to drop this hand inside. So now it's a modified somewhere between a darts and a baseball bat choke. So like a baseball darts choke, I guess we can call it that, right? So, um, and this one I actually hit in competition and I've never really did it before in competition, but it just felt right and I managed to win the match like that. So ever since then, I've been trying to replicate it and polish up the details and it's been really helpful for me. So one more time on this one here, I'm trying to get in deep. He's pushing his head way back here like this so I connect my fingers instead. I drop my elbows down, try to make my elbows meet together. And then the choke takes place right there in that little pocket. Even though his arm's inside, his arm's not doing any measure to really open up that space. So I'm, I'm just still gonna keep him locked in and finish the choke that way. If I can't quite get that, <clears throat> and we get here like this, and I actually filmed this on a video a long time ago with Aaron Gennetti who's standing right over there. <laughs> but whenever we, we get to this position and he's pushing his head back and I can't quite even get my fingers connected, then I'm gonna bring this hand on top here like this. And now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna try to push this palm to the floor over here. So now that's gonna require me to run around his body palm here like this. And that's gonna flatten him back out. Now, the benefit of doing it this way here, not just that it gets me back to side control, but I wanna already be thinking ahead and then planning ahead here like this. So once I get him flattened out, I can go back to another baseball bat choke, which is a pretty cool measure, or I can observe what this arm's gonna do. So as he turns to face me, when this hand is ready, I'm gonna press this down toward the floor. So now, um, once I have that arm planted, I'm gonna bring my knee and my elbow tight together on this side, and then I'm gonna throw this leg up and around and shoot in for the triangle from here. Now, I know I said this is a Darce choke video and I just showed a triangle from side control or a mounted triangle, um, but it's because it started, it originated from a place where I'm trying to get the Darce choke. He shuts me down. I have to have countermeasure and countermeasure. So one more time, this is a cool transition. It's very Instagram worthy if you want that. So we go here, I try to get inside here. It's not happening. I go palm, Instead of under, I go on top here. I'm gonna drive this hand toward the floor, circle around his body, and as I get to his body, the hand and the arm come together tight like this. I press his hand down toward his diaphragm. I lift up this way, throw this leg over and around, shoot underneath. I've got the arm bar option or the mounted triangle option from right there. Um, another place where we can look to hit the darts from here 
is whenever you're, you know, you've been training for a few months in Jiu Jitsu and you've learned how to do an Americana here like this, the next thing you typically will learn a little bit later on is that as I go for Americana, what is he gonna do? He's gonna come in and he's gonna try to protect his arm. So as he comes over like this and passes his arm across, we're typically taught to go into a technical mount kind of position and then start looking for the arm bar. Well, that's very telegraphed um, and it also requires me to go for a little lower percentage movement. But if he does come across and he's trying to uh, protect his arm that I'm attacking with Americana here, like this, then from here, what I can look to do is turn a little bit farther and I'm gonna shoot my arm down inside here like this. So now, once I have that arm, I'm gonna lean that direction, pull my leg off, just go back around, and then now I'm back into that Darce choke here. So how we set that up right here, I go to push this arm down on the floor. You can use over grip or under grip. There's pros and cons to each. That's a different video. But as I push this down to the floor and he goes to protect against that arm, he brings this arm across his center line. So whenever his arm goes across his center line, I'm gonna keep pressing down here. I'm gonna shoot underneath and I'm gonna wrap up that head and that arm together like that. I'm gonna lean the direction so the weight comes off of this leg. I'm gonna circle back here, walk it around, and I'm gonna finish here in that original side control Darce choke like we talked about in the very beginning. So we've looked at Darce choke from a variety of different positions, starting with side control, um, how to combat his underhook for his uphill escape by throwing my wizard, funneling in for the Darce choke. We looked at from turtle position, me flipping him over, and then funneling back from side control. If he goes to arch his head back, we looked at passing to the other side of the body here, or we looked at getting the arm in baseball back choke. We also looked at from butterfly guard, how to arm drag, pull him into that Marsh choke or that modified Darce choke, and then we also Finally, we looked at from the mount position, going for the Americana, he comes across to protect it, and he gives me the head and arm connection that I need to be able to funnel in and get the Darce choke that way. So the Darce can happen from so many different directions, so many different places. I didn't even cover all of them here. There's still north-south entries and everything else, but maybe that's future videos. Hope you like these guys. Uh, make sure to drop me a comment. Uh, tell me which one you like the most uh, and which ones I left out so that I can do that in a new video in the, in the future. Paul, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, so Thank you for having me back yeah. again. And make sure if you're in St. Louis area and you want a good place to train, come check out Midwest Krav Maga up here. They've got a great jiu-jitsu program as well as Krav Maga and kickboxing and everything else. So thank you guys for watching the Night Jiu-Jitsu channel. Thank you. Awesome, dude. There's a reason why you're Oh, Jesus. <laughs>